Welcome to another episode of the Investment Immigration Podcast brought to you by uglobal.com. I'm your host Salman Siddiqui and I'm joining you live from Berlin. So today we are going to focus on Norway. Now Norway is a very interesting Scandinavian country. There's a lot of news about the supposed options that it offers to a lot of investors and people with big money to, you know, get residencies in uh, the country by just buying real estate or supposedly just bringing their money but is that all true there's so much news out there that we don't know because if we go to the official websites of norway they don't mention any of that so what is going on this is something that even me who has been following the industry for such a long time was sort of perplexed that maybe this is not the case but to explain all of this i have the perfect professional to help us understand all of this today and today with me i'm very happy to say uh, we have thomas reinhold he's the founder of reinhold law firm and he's joining us all the way from norway so welcome to the show thomas thank you very much thank you i'm glad, very happy to be here thank you so much so thomas please explain to our listeners is all the news that they are getting from the internet especially about this supposed investment visa that Norway offers the option to buy real estate for investors is that all true or is this not the case please explain Norway does not have an investment visa or an investment uh, visa option or is something that you can invest and get the res- residency directly I also, or we get a lot of inquiries about that kind of visa because they read some something online. But uh, unfortunately, Norway does not have that type of visa. Right. So, tell us what exactly does Norway offer in terms of visas? What options are there for, especially for foreign nationals, non-EU, and um, people who are, come from non-Schengen countries? So there are a number of uh, potential visas that you can apply for and uh, but uh, I assume that what is most relevant for your listeners would be like a worker working visa like as for Norway we have a skilled worker visa either as as an employee in uh, a company so basically if you you have a job offer from a Norwegian employer then you can apply apply for a skilled worker visa. So it's that skilled, meaning that you have to have uh, usually either a vocational training or a bachelor's degree that is uh, relevant for um, the position that you are offered. And and it also the um, salary requirements. So you have to have basically get offered the same salary as what is common or standard in Norway for that type of position. Right. And thank you for clarifying that important point that the other options that we are listening about in the internet is not true. But I want you to further clarify those points. Like I've read online that supposedly Norway has this investment visa. Is there any such category called the investment visa category in Norway? In By law, it is nothing. Uh, it's, it's not an investment visa. No, we do not have that. Okay, so if somebody is a foreign investor and he or she or they want to come to the country, what options do they have? The option is based if they want to work in Norway, then there may be different options in terms of um, if they invest in a company and get get a job offer from that company to work actually in Norway. Then the um, the, but that will require that they have, for example, a bachelor's or a master's degree that is relevant for that position. Then, so that can be one option. And also, if they um, as a a skilled worker visa can also be in like as a sole proprietorship. So you set up your own business and you have like a business ID to set up something in Norway that you're running a business abroad that is very successful and you wanna transfer it to Norway and then you can prove that it has been successful abroad and then uh, then you can set up a sole proprietorship in Norway and then work with that but then then you have to make probable that you can make uh, a certain minimum 
amount of money per year to support yourself then. So it, 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 it kind of depends on the scale of uh, business and the scale of what kind of uh, investments we are talking about. And if they are willing to work, uh, but that's usually if you work as an investor, that might be, um, I mean, it depends. It, it may be possible, but it might also be challenging then because you will have to have, for example, if you're a self-made person in abroad and and you do not have a master's or bachelor's degree in finance, and then then it might be challenging to get a skilled worker visa for a finance position, and even though you have a lot of experience. And, but also experience can be accounted for. So if you can document that and so on, that might be possible. But um, all these things are, it, it will be based on a subjective assessment by the Directorate of Immigration. So if you're thinking about going down that route, then it's very important that you make sure that you have the sufficient documentation because in the first place, and that's why we usually recommend using a lawyer. And because if you send in um, insufficient documentation and they reject your application, then the appeal process is, is quite lengthy, um, usually longer than it uh, takes to actually apply. So you will lose a lot of time if if you potentially um, don't submit uh, all the necessary documents and uh, the documentation is not strong enough in the first place then. Right. And from what I could gather from what you just said is that basically you're saying that the doors to for foreign investors, it's not correct to even say that they are closed in Norway. There are options for them given that they have to meet certain criteria in terms of education documents, their assets. But this other side of the story that uh, maybe, you know, they have no options in Norway is also not true, isn't it? Yeah, so it's not either perfectly neither. <laughs> either or, but it's, it's not the Norwegian visa program and the, and the legal framework is such that it's for work that you can get the visa so the the main route is to to actually work in norway and if you're interested in that and have a job offer then uh, then it's possible to get a visa but uh, i mean it uh, if you have this much or that much uh, or little or much money it doesn't really matter because it, it's about the the job offer itself and and if you meet the requirements for that type of visa, that's that's uh, what matters to the Directorate of Immigration. Right. Now, for example, is it possible for somebody to acquire shares in a company or acquire a, a Norwegian uh, company and then maybe use that as a route to, to gain residency in the country or invest in a Norwegian company and become a partner there? and then maybe gain residency. Are those options there on the table, for example? Not as an investor. So if uh, a foreigner invests in a Norwegian company, that would not make him eligible to a visa for, in Norway. But if he gets a, a job offer from that company that is relevant to his also education, then he might to be able to uh, to get a visa but that will be a skilled worker visa right so the main option that's on the table is the skilled workers a visa and for that there are specific requirements that they have to meet now let's talk a little bit more of those requirements first uh, that i would like to know from you is whether there are any language requirements that they have to meet in order to gain uh, that visa not necessarily, because uh, some of the the companies they work in English, so or the foreign uh, foreign language, so so that that would be more relevant whether or not the person would get the the position, the offer, the position or not, and he or she gets offered a position, then it's fine, because that's up to the the company itself if they they require Norwegian language uh, skills or not, and. Right. And 
you know, there's a trend for especially the skilled workers visa that I'm seeing in, for example, in the EU countries, where uh, a lot of these visas are mostly given to IT people, IT professionals, because that's the kind of workers they want in the country. So is there a specific industry that Norway is targeting with the skilled week workers visa program? Are there certain um, professionals that they would give preference to? For the IT professionals, uh, it may not be. I mean, if you have uh, extensive experience, then the, um, the formal education may not be that. Uh, and then they can be easier on the, or they can lower the, the, the requirements for a formal education if you have a longer experience, especially in the IT industry then. I mean, Norway is, is quite strict in terms of visa. So it's uh, it's kind of either you fulfill the requirements or you, or you don't. And so it doesn't matter which which industry or it's it's very much up to you to fulfill the requirements or the, the applicant. And as long as he or she does that, then regardless of industry, he or she would be um, granted the visa. Then. I see. Okay, I understand a bit about the rules being followed there. But say, for example, somebody is a you know wants to set up a startup, or and especially in the IT field, there are a lot of professionals who like to you know form their own companies, their own startup and programs. So is there is there a category for them in Norway, or uh, maybe a preferential treatment for these kind of professionals who want to set up a, a startup? business in the country and then maybe they can even provide employment um, in the country yes yeah, so, so that would typically be the the sole proprietorship uh, route then, uh, which was also a skilled worker visa but the, um, the income or the sales requirements for the first year is lower uh, than what is required for a um for a salary position then but you will the in the sole proprietorship proprietorship route uh, the the applicant would um, would have to make probable that he or she can uh, to, to make or, or to just uh, just uh, under 300,000 Norwegian kroners comparatively the the salary for a bachelor's degree is 448,900 so it's about 150,000 more that you have to have and then you would have to fulfill the credit the requirements going forward then so, so if you want to make it do a startup it, it is definitely possible but then you have to have a solid business plan and uh, be able to make probable that it's a viable business and it has a <laughs> probable income going forward then so talking about the business plan then that's what I want to understand from you. Is the Norwegian government giving preference or approving more certain kind of business plans compared to others? Like, for example, is there a priority area for them uh, or an industry for them that they would, uh, the chances of success for an applicant would increase if that business plan aligns with that? And how do they you know, ensure that their business plan would be successful? That's a very good question. And I mean, generally speaking, Norway, we are very focused on, on startups and startup communities and accelerators and so on these days. But uh, from an immigration perspective, I'm not aware that they will have any preference or I'm not fully informed about all, all what is going on in, in, internally in the director of immigration, of course. Um, but um, I have not seen any documents that will that says that uh, or that say that you, it will be easier if you have this industry or that industry. I think my understanding and experience is that it's the business plan itself, regardless of industry, that uh, matters. But of course, if you're in an industry that's very unlikely to <laughs> to succeed, or if it's um, I mean, you need something or you need a permit that will take many years to acquire or something like that. Obviously, it, it wouldn't go through then. But uh, 
my experience is that it's business plan itself and the strength uh, of that. And maybe if you have done something abroad that's similar, if you can show something that's already worked in the same industry or something like that, then then it's uh, easier to get it through. I see. And in terms of who approves the business plan, could you also explain the process? Like, is this all handled by uh, Norway's um, immigration department or will the business plan be evaluated by a business separate business council? Who has a say in all of this? So it's the directorate of immigration that you submit all the, or through the police and then to the directory of immigration that has the, the, so the responsibility to actually go through everything and uh, say either we grant you a visa or we don't. And then you can appeal, of course, then if they reject it. And you can also submit additional documentation. And sometimes that is needed then to, to appeal and, and then, um, submit additional documentation and then they may may or may not change their decision so that's the but it's i mean internally they have resources that uh, consider this then, and they have like regulations to how to assess it but it's also a, of course a subjective um, assessment and that is uh, that has to be done internally and in the directory of immigration so, so that's why it comes back to what I said in the beginning, that it's very important that you, in the first place, work this through very thoroughly also with a lawyer and, I mean, prefer preferably with a lawyer, so that uh, you don't uh, lose too much time. And it is uh, as good as it can be in the first place then, uh, instead of, because it's if the appeal process is lengthy and so on. Right. And, and speaking of the, you know, the time process, the time it takes for all these processes to go through, let's talk about the processing times a little bit. Generally, whether you're applying for a skilled workers visa or this sole proprietorship through that uh, route, how much time does it usually take for a successful applicant to go through all of this? That's also a good question, <laughs> and it, it depends on, but generally speaking, it takes around four months after you've delivered the, the documents. But it, it, it varies, and it, uh, I mean, you have to check uh, weekly on the, on the director of the immigration's uh, website to, to see what the current processing time is, but usually it's around uh, four months for a worker, for a skilled worker visa, but it, uh, it may um, depending on if the, it's the employer it's, uh, that um, sends the application or if it's the employee, that also has a, an implication because the employer can send everything online whilst the, the employee has to, to book an appointment and then hand in the documents. And uh, for the past couple of years, it has been quite a, a long time to actually get to the appointment and so it can take several months before you get an appointment so, and that depends on uh, where you are in the country if you're applying from Norway or if you're applying from abroad and um, that's also something to consider. Right and so for those applicants who apply from abroad a majority would be there I assume how can they find that information or could you share also with our listeners the government websites which are official where they should go to seek that initial information uh, to see if they meet those requirements. That is UDI, U-D-N-I dot N-O. That is the official uh, Directorate of Immigration website. And then there you can find all the requirements. It's, it's also in English language. So there you can find all the requirements. You can find the checklist for which documents you need. It gives you extensive information about the, the process. And also you can check the waiting time and for the processing time and, and so on. Then It's a valuable resource. It's much better than <laughs> some of these <laughs> websites that claim this and that. And, and then you get uh, all the official information about uh, also the income requirements and they have forms for the, from the, the employer, like the, the job offer and what you, what needs to be uh, listed there and, and so on. And so it's, it's a valuable resource and, uh, and very easy to navigate also. Right. And 
you know, we've talked about the skilled workers visa. We've talked a little bit about the sole proprietorship option there. One question that usually comes for any country's program and which a lot of our listeners are very much interested to hear about is the real estate option. So please clarify for our listeners, is there any real estate option to gain residency in Norway? Like, you know, they can in, they come to the country, say, for example, even with a with a job skilled workers route and they buy some property. Would that ensure them long term residency or oh, that does, just doesn't work in Norway? No, that doesn't work. So it's only the skilled uh, worker the visa. Or I mean, typically what will happen is that if if it's a couple and then uh, if one one of uh, either husband or uh, wife gets uh, a skilled worker visa, the other person can apply for a family visa then. So that's uh, that's an option then um, to uh, that both parties can come then if both both of them don't have a job in 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 Norway. But uh, I mean, uh, any investments wouldn't uh, make you eligible for a visa in Norway. But as a foreigner, you 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 can uh, you can own a property in Norway, but that alone. You would if you if you come from a country that doesn't allow um, uh, stay a visa free stay, then then you would have to then you have to apply for a visitor's visa every time. Then so that would be a little bit um, challenging or a lot of work. Then to uh, yeah, but uh, I mean, a lot of uh, foreigners they have uh, have real estate in Norway that uh, that they use for typically like. Uh, holiday home or something like that Um, right and is that an option that somebody comes in and say buys a commercial property for example invests i mean you know i'm saying they come through whatever route and they say for example decide to buy a hotel for example if they want to do that is that possible To buy a commercial property, it it uh, I mean uh, generally speaking yes, but it may require some per- permits depending on what type of property. Then buying an apartment is usually or a house is usually not a problem, but um, it may or may not uh, require a permit. Then. but generally speaking, it's uh, it's uh, easy for foreigners to to buy property in Norway. But it I wouldn't uh, give them a visa, so they would right. have to have a have a have a job to to secure a visa. So thank you for clarifying those points. From what I could gather from you was, you know, you can buy property, you can even maybe buy commercial property, but that doesn't guarantee your residency. For your residency, you need the skilled worker or your job at a certain company to ensure your stay in uh, Norway. So thank you for clarifying those points. And let's uh, also talk about what you touched upon just a little while earlier about bringing your family to uh, Norway. So suppose somebody is on a skilled worker's visa or or through the sole proprietor uh, route, He's he or they are there in the country. How long does this family, uh, the process to bring the family take uh, can it happen immediately when they're uh, you know applying for the permit or, or is there a waiting time what options do they have for a family visa it usually takes a little bit longer time but they lately they have uh, cut down the, the processing time for those visas as well it generally goes faster now but it depends on the country from which they are from and with what type of passport or nationality they have quite a few countries now we're talking in six seven months for processing time but then also that is from the time you have delivered the papers or handed in the documents then the application process is such that you first you submit an application online and then you book an appointment to hand in the documents on the checklist and that time between those, uh, the, the time bit from the from the point you you submit the, the online application to the time you actually can hand in the, the documents online, that may also take a couple of months. Then, but uh, it depends on where you are, and, and especially if you're in Oslo, then 
are going to hand them in here. Okay. And let's also talk about, are there any countries from where applicants are not allowed to apply for a Norwegian visa? I'm talking this in the context of, say, for example, the Ukraine war, which is ongoing right, right now. We saw that in a lot of countries, there were restrictions on Russians and Belarusian nationals from applying for various countries, EU countries uh, programs. So are there any similar restrictions in Norway at the moment? Actually, that's a question I cannot answer because I'm, I usually don't, uh, don't uh, handle or I, ha- I have not handled that type of cases lately, so I haven't looked into it. That's that's fine. Um, I, I only ask because I, I hear this a lot. I believe there are no restrictions then. It's, it's an individual assessment in each case then. Okay, good. Well, moving on, I mean, we're coming close to the end of our episode. Before uh, we go, I would also like to know the trends that you're observing in the skilled workers visa category. Are you seeing applicants from certain countries coming more over the years? Has those trends changed? Can you share maybe a success story that you personally know from your clients? Yeah, so generally speaking, the, the thankfully, the, the processing time has decreased and that's uh, very helpful for many people and also they're very much uh, happy about that. And I, I handle all types of visas, and so quite a few in the IT industry, obviously, because that's uh, and a lot of people from India come to Norway and work in the IT industry. So we have uh, helped quite a few of those, and and also with family visa, then, and uh, and people are so happy when they can get your family here <laughs> because uh, it's always obviously a big thing to move. one thing is to move to another different country, but also then they have the waiting time to take into account and they have maybe have to be apart from their spouse and so on. So not long ago, I actually helped, uh, it was an American citizen to gain, uh, he was applying for a family visa and, and they were quite young, this couple. And, um, and since he could not work, it's because when you, you can stay for quite a few people, you can stay in Norway while, while the the application is in process, and, but then you you're not allowed to work then. So you're here, but you don't you can't g- gather any income. Uh, so that's obviously a, a little bit of a pinch. And and uh, but he he got the visa in three days then, so <laughs> he was very very happy. <laughs> <laughs> and that uh, there because that was a big thing for him and be able to work and and get the visa. So, um, but do do you see a lot of Americans coming to Norway on, on uh, visas uh, like this or other ca- categories of visas? Yeah, I have quite a few American uh, clients. Yes, they they are also they're very interested to know about these things that we're talking about now because they quite a few of them have read online that you can actually buy something in Norway and then. Then we have to clarify these things then that we have, have done right now. So typically American like um, people that are in are close to getting uh, retired or yeah. Right. So and this is what I want to know from you, like the American clients of yours. What, what's your main motivation to come to Norway? Is it people like you just mentioned close to retirement age, or, or do you also see? young people who want to, you know, get a taste of uh, Europe or Scandinavian countries and just try their luck uh, there. Because of what's happening in the situation back home, they want a calmer environment. What are you hearing from your clients? Oh, so it's, it's some people, uh, some have been very successful investing and then they somehow they usually have some, ba- some um, either family or some people even is they speak Norwegian. I mean, a little bit of Norwegian. They have some uh, some family relations to Norway, and some people also have. Um, they they just been there visiting and they love the the environment and the fjords and <laughs> and the nature and and really would like to to settle here. Then. So they're generally positive about uh, and also the location because it's quite easy. To, to travel to Europe and uh, yeah, all over the world, basically, and yeah, it's 
in in Oslo you can both live in a in a big city and also have the nature next door basically <laughs> and you have a ski slope there and you can go uh, the boats and the, and the islands and in, in the summer so it's quite uh, unique in that sense in uh, compared to living in a in a big uh, city in the, with no with the, yeah that is uh, a lot of other people and, and so on and i mean norway only has a, a little bit more than 5.5 million people it's not a big country uh, compared to that's less usually less than a big american city that's true that's true so thank you so much uh, thomas we've come to the end of our show thank you so much for sharing so much details about N norway and about what options are really there on the table and how you dispel so many myths that are spreading around on the internet so thank you so much for coming to my show well thank you very much for having me it was a pleasure speaking with you and i hope uh, the, the information and knowledge can be helpful for uh, for your listeners thank you and in the end I'll, i'm just going to give a shout out to our listeners that please stay tuned to our show we'll be bringing you professionals from other parts of the world to explain to you what other options investors have around the world so stay tuned and thank you <laughs>